A man follows God and goes into death. <laughs> That's where Daniel was going, after all. Into a lion's den. Into death. But morning comes. And he comes out. And, and now we hear echoes. Echoes of the call, Lazarus, come out. Echoes of promises made near the end. I, I go to prepare a place for you. Promises made on a cross. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Visions of an empty tomb. Dying and rising. These are the central themes of the faith we share. Dying and rising. But as with Daniel, we see that dying and rising is a theme that not only involves the big final death, but those smaller deaths that do not take us from this life, but rather symbolize our suffering. Likewise, as he emerges from the den of lions, we see that resurrection is symbolic of something that occurs in this life as well. It, it, it kind of makes you think, as we looked at the loss of our normal national holiday this week, how death can be symbolic of loss within the confines of earthly life and how it can leave us longing for a soon to be experienced in this life resurrection. Our faith calls us to a continual dying and rising, not just at the end, but throughout the spiritual journey. Jesus calls us to take up our cross, and that involves a whole lot of dying and rising. Jesus calls us to take up our cross, maybe partly because it gives us practice, because sooner or later, as we all know right now, life will hand you a cross. Our friend Daniel did something that some might have called a dumb thing. He kept doing what his faith called him to do. The henchmen of King Darius, tired of this Jewish kid and his influence at court, I mean, after all, the kid is a refugee. He's a kid from Israel. Why should he be the king's darling? Well, those henchmen set a trap. Anyone caught praying, they declare, to any god but the king himself for the next 30 days shall be cat food. <laughs> and bumbling King Darius signs the statement into law. But of course, Daniel kept praying to God. And, of course, the henchman knew he would, because even if you hated him, you gotta admit, the kid, well, he had character. And they catch him. And they catch poor, fumbling Darius in his own stupid law. And they escort Daniel to death, to his cross, which came equipped with claws and jaws and hungry bellies. And Daniel goes willingly. You know, we've done some pretty strange things to our faith. This faith that calls us to be like Daniel. This faith that's supposed to be about dying and rising. When Jesus talks about taking up our cross, He's not asking us to literally die, not usually. He's asking us to live as he lived. Living for others, feeding, healing, bringing good news to the poor, showing in our words and our actions that all people are one family, that we're all gods. He's asking us to live in a way where we find that we're doing the opposite of what the world tells us to do. And the world, of course, tells us, grab all you can. And so what have we done with his message? Well, some of us who call his name have declared that faith is not only a path to grabbing all that you can, but that God will make the grab for you if you simply believe in God the right way. 
Some have taken his message and used it rather than as a call for inclusion, as a club to hurt those who seem different. Some have taken his message and said, help the downtrodden, but only if they can prove to us they deserve it. Some have taken his message and made it basically irrelevant to this life, making it simply a ticket to heaven. Essentially saying, live for you, live for yours. Your place is assured. Some of us have taken the cross and forgotten its true meaning and simply put it around our necks and said, isn't that pretty? The truth is, we have all done something or do something to alter or soften the message. Because that message, it's a lot. After all, who wants to die? Who would want that? Jesus would want that. Jesus wants that. Jesus wants us to embrace the darkness, to bring it into the light. Jesus wants us to live for others, to feed, to heal, to bring good news to the poor, to show in our words and actions that all people are one family and all are gods. Jesus wants us to take the time to listen to our hurting neighbor, to be willing to give of something that we have so that someone who is in need can have enough, to be a safe place for someone who's struggling to break a sweat or shed a tear to make someone's life better, to experience that little death of giving ourselves away to bring someone to resurrection, to experience resurrection ourselves, to go into the lion's den with the faith that Jesus will bring us out. As we enter this season of darkness, as we wait for the light, be willing to embrace the darkness of that lion's den. Be Christ for another and do it understanding that the light will indeed shine through you. Enter that den knowing that what will, call, what will come next is what we're called to experience. Resurrection.